To me, Global Reach Out is inspiring. It's connecting with God, reaching out to the world, and impacting life. The stories that are shared is so personal and it deeply impacted me. Global Reach Out to me is reach out to the truth. Connecting hearts, connecting lives. You're listening to Global Reach Out. Nowadays, it is so common to read in the news that when an ordinary man on the street is convicted of certain crimes or wrongdoings, nobody will take notice of it unless it's somebody prominent like politicians, rich businessmen, or a star in entertainment world. However, I would like to add that when an ordinary church leader like a pastor is involved, the news media will also amplify the case. By now, you can visualize that Christians are being scrutinized by the society at large. People in general expect that Christians are good people and no wrong must be seen to be coming from them. Thus, Christians are being used as a yardstick to measure the good in society. In this regard, it is important for Christians to walk the talk. As believers in Christ, we are not to be conformed to this world, but we are to model our lives after Christ. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to address the Christian ethics at workplace topic in a Q&A format. One, how to deal with corruption at workplace. During the 80s and more so into the 90s, where globalization was taking place, many countries were opening up, and as a result, corruption was rampant in countries around this region. As the saying goes, whether you were in sales or procurement, this big C equal corruption word must be blended into your business strategy in order to be successful in a globalized world. As a Christian, I beg to defer, and we can navigate through this web of corruption by trusting in God for help. Proverbs 29 4 says, A just king gives stability to his nation, but one who demands bribes destroys it. It is clear that corruption not only destroys a person, but also a country. Just look around countries with corrupted leaders will result in its people living in poverty. I had been involved in both the roles as a buyer and as well as sales in the organization that I work for. I will not disclose which organization, but will address the issues. I remember that when I first took over as the head of commercial department, I had to visit customers and suppliers in the region. As a buyer, in all the places that I went to, I was, treat, I was treated extremely well. It was just like nature that these suppliers will automatically want to provide me personal benefits for the furtherance of our business dealings. My response to this was that I told the suppliers to provide further discount to the price we agreed on. I will also add on to say that our sourcing strategy is to buy products or materials with quality meeting our specification with on-time delivery and competitive pricing. After some time, words get around that what I look for is quality, price, and on-time delivery. Through this, many suppliers were very happy to deal with us as they don't have to build in additional costs into their pricing. In sales, I'll be sitting on the other side of the fence, just like the suppliers I described before. It was a practice for sales staff to entice buyers of products with personal incentives. If not, it was extremely difficult to make any sales and the buyers will look elsewhere for suppliers. To overcome this issue, I have to recommend to management to sell our products through a third party or agent in that country instead of selling direct. 
well, is this right knowing that my agent is now doing the dirty job? Well, I sincerely believe that what is important is that our conscience must be clear as the transaction between us and the agent is well above board. How the agent going to entertain the buyer in his home country is within his prerogative, and there's no need for us to know. The agent is being rewarded by us as he needs to provide customer service to the buyers. If one is still uncomfortable with the arrangement, then sales is not a profession for you. However, I must qualify that not all sales were done in this manner. Two, how to say no to alcohol when you are on business trip or function. The first recorded miracle in the New Testament was told in John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, was when Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding. As such, is it wrong to drink alcohol when our Lord Jesus Christ even provided wine at a wedding? I'm not a Bible scholar nor a prophet, and thus will not be philosophical about how high is the alcohol content in the wine mentioned in John 2. What's important is that the Bible does not forbid one to drinking alcohol. However, the Bible clearly warns us about getting drunk, which can lead to reckless indiscretion. What this means is that when one is under the influence of alcohol, many silly things can happen as one is no longer in control of oneself. Thus, it is important to take heed of what Ephesians 5.18 says, and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. I used to drink sparingly during business functions before I came to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. After knowing that the Bible says about drinking wine, I have completely abstained from alcohol. So, in every new organization I go to, I will take every first opportunity to declare that I don't drink as I'm a Christian. So, when I entertain or being entertained by business partners, I will just opt for fruit juice. Once our colleagues and business partners know that you don't drink, they will not ask you again. I have instances where people ask me why I don't drink. I will always reply and say that it is because of my religion. I will explain that I'm a Christian and though my religion does not forbid me from drinking, but I make a stand and choose not to drink. I answered it this way, as some can even tell you that Jesus turned water into wine. Thus, what's wrong with drinking wine? My answer is to address my conviction as a Christian and that I took a stand not to drink, though my religion does not forbid me. If they probe further, I'll quote Ephesians 5.18 and do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Then I will explain that one is un then I will explain that when one is under the influence of alcohol, many unforeseen things can happen. Thus, to avoid all these for myself, it is best to remain sober by not drinking. Don't be ashamed by what you say, as the Lord will take care of his own for his glory. I use the same approach when I use the same approach even doing business in China. Very often you will hear businesses are concluded to drinking baiju. Well, in China, I will clearly tell the host or business partners that because of my religion, I don't drink. I survived doing business in China without drinking over the last 30 years. Three, how to deal with seventh month or ghost month celebration at work. In Chinese culture, many of us will be familiar with the Hungry Ghost Festival or better known as the seventh or ghost month festival. It is a tradition that pays respect to the spirits of the dead. Chinese believes 
that during the seventh lunar month, the spirits of the dead will be wandering on earth and one needs to make offerings to the spirits to ward away any bad luck befalling on oneself or one's business. Thus, it is common in, for companies and factories with many Chinese employees to celebrate such festivals. All Chinese employees are required to participate and make money contribution to the celebration. The celebration will be in the form of making food offerings, burning joss papers, eating food offered to the spirits, and participating in the auction. From 1989 to 1997, I was faithfully contributing and participating in the celebration of the seven-month festival. As a manager in the department, I must also lead in the worship of the spirits. However, all this came to a stop in 1998, as I was by then a new babe in Christ. As usual, came the time to contribute to the seven-month celebration. I politely said to the organizer with immediate effect, I will no longer participate in the celebration as I'm now a Christian. I explained to the organizer that I can no longer contribute nor eating any of the foods offered in prayer as my religion forbid me from doing so. When I was the general manager or managing director of my previous companies I worked for, I allow the practice to continue. I have no right to stop them since it is their rights to do so. However, if the company belongs to me personally, I would have no choice but to stop the practice within the company compound. If the, com if the employees so wish to organize a celebration somewhere else, then I have no right to stop them. One important point to note is that there is no spirits of the dead lurking around on this earth at all. Even during the seventh month, what we have or hear about on earth is truly the evil spirit. Since people want to acknowledge there are spirits of the dead, therefore the devil makes us believe there are. Make no mistake that when a person dies, his or her spirit straight away goes either to hell or heaven. There is only one way to heaven, as John 14, 6 says. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. How do we know we go to heaven straight away upon death? Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 9. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The program is proudly presented by Global Reach Out. We welcome you to share our live enriching webcasts with family and friends through our website, global-reachout.org. Let's reach out to bless more lives together.